I want to talk about three things today. Success, impact, and action. Imagine this. You have a heart condition. You have a 40% higher chance of sudden death. You can't drink caffeine, so no coffee or tea or alcohol. You can't dive or run. But you push yourself anyway. You go for 5 km runs once a week. You run for about 20 seconds and your heart rate goes up to 170 beats per minute. An average person's heart rate is 70 beats per minute. You can't run anymore. You brisk walk instead. Your heart rate remains the same. It's pumping very hard and very fast. And you can feel how irregular it is. The music in your ears drowns out the sound, but you still can feel it. The palpitations tell you Every single time you run, it makes you ask yourself, is this it? Am I going to die today? I have this heart condition. And I'm immensely lucky because it forces me to reflect often. Am I okay with what I'm doing? With where I'm going? With who I am today? Success is deeply personal. Success is actually about fulfillment of your dreams and your potential. And in the end, success is about happiness. I keep hearing all these uh, inspirational stories about people who have run races without legs or hiked across continents. But I can't relate to them. I mean, I can't even keep up with the aunties in a simple aerobics class in the gym. So I understand the message, but most of the time, I just feel really worthless. What can anything I do measure up to what they've done? And this exact sense of inadequacy is a modern disease. The disease that makes us compare our achievements instead of working together. The disease that makes us fear losing out. And no one wants to lose out, right? So we are hungry to be better than the next person, even if we hate what we are doing. But success, real success, is deeply personal. There's a story I came across, some of you may have read or heard it before. A woman whose work is to relieve the suffering of dying patients uh, said, people grow a lot when faced with their mortality. When questioned about regrets they had or things they may have done differently, a few common themes surfaced again and again. Here are the most common ones. Number one, I wish I had the courage to live a life true to myself, not the life others expected of me. Number two, I wish I didn't work so hard. And number three, I wish I'd let myself be happier. Notice that the only thing said about success is that they wish it were personal. Today's success is a number, the number associated with money, with age, with achievements. Success is anything quantified. But you see, here's where it gets tricky. The moment you define yourself with a number, you lose who you are. But success is not a number, though. Success comes in many different forms. Years ago, I was an intern at Motorola. I was really pumped because I personally love technology. This would have been a great opportunity for me to go out and learn how technology was being made. So on the first day, I went in, and I was given two weeks to do data entry on a stack of surveys. Data entry. I went home and cried. I thought, what a rubbish internship. So I was whining and moping for an hour, and then I got a grip on myself. I said, and I decided, you know what? I was going to learn everything I could. So the next day, I went in early, I stayed back late, and I completely crushed it. 
So now I had one and a half weeks to do what? Anything I wanted. So I went around bothering every single person on the level, asking them what they did, how they did it, what roles they, they, they were performing. And it was really cool because I learned how a multinational company was run. I learned how technology was made. I got told off a lot of times, but I also made friends. And then I became chairperson of my own outreach event. I helped organize two of the major regional events. I got stellar testimonials from managers and VPs alike. And I actually received an award for outstanding performance. And I was so pleased with myself. But you know what? To everyone else, it was just an internship. So why did it matter? Because of impact. The impact of paying your dues. The impact of learning and practicing humility, diligence and discipline so that today I can competently contribute in my work and improving lives through that. This is the impact of experience. Recognize impact. Small things add up to make a huge difference. Even though only one man is remembered for being the first person on the moon, thousands of great minds put him there. Every contribution adds up. But some impactful things aren't small though. Some are actually really big. It's just that we're so focused on the numbers that we fail to recognize their importance. I received a message on, face, uh, on Facebook from this girl uh, years before. She said to me, thank you for being so nice. I replied and I said, well, um, I'm sorry, I don't recall what you're talking about. She said, many years ago, in school, I was crying and alone. And instead of ignoring me like everyone else, you actually came up to me and asked me what was wrong. And you stayed and comforted me. I didn't think anything of it. But years later, she still remembered and was moved enough to write to me. Yet I barely remembered it. This is the everyday impact of humanity. Let's go back to one of the regrets from before. I wish I didn't work so hard. But why? Because then we have neither the time nor the focus to appreciate things, to be human, to share experiences with others. I'm sure all of you here have very strong memories of teachers that you've had in your life. But do you realize that whenever you go back to say hi, they may not actually recall the same things you do? So if we remember such experiences so vividly, then why aren't we focusing on what is so obviously important to us? In the end, what makes us matter is not our grades, not our money, not our achievements. It is our humanity. Another lost ruin of modern times is integrity. I held a focus group for my business a week ago um, at 7 p.m. On the same day, one person cancelled. Half an hour before that, at 6.30, four people sent me text messages saying, I'm sorry, I can't come. So three out of eight people came. That's not even half. Even with friends, I've had to wait a long time or even experience last-minute cancellations. And you know what? I'm guilty of it myself. But you and I both know that if we wanted to be on time, we could be. And if we wanted to be somewhere, that's where we'd be. But integrity doesn't seem so important anymore. We have become untrustworthy. Why? Because being good doesn't matter anymore. Being rich does. Being successful does. If someone doesn't contribute to our success, they are not worth our time. But that's not true though. Research shows time and time again that people help those they trust and respect. Between two friends, 
one of whom is always there for you and always follows through his promises, and another who only occasionally turns up, who do you respect more? Who are you more likely to help? Integrity is about trusting and being trustworthy, even if it is to yourself. If you say you're going to get fit, get fit. If you say you're going to meet someone, meet them. If you can't answer an email or be on time, why would someone trust you to run a company? Why would someone recommend you for a job? Why would, someone, why would investors put down money on your startup if you don't have this integrity? Integrity from the inside is what will breed success externally. Last point, action. Just because you have a good foundation doesn't mean that you'll have a good house. You still have to build it. All the knowledge, character and hearts in the world will amount to nothing unless we take action. After my O-levels, I did a, a simple job as an admin assistant. As a very simple admin role, I was, of course, instantly bored. So I actively took on new roles, venturing into marketing, sales, PR, sponsorship, ground operations. It was the first skydiving festival ever in Singapore, with 20,000 people attending. There were international stuntmen, international press, six-figure sponsorships. Six months from when I took the job as an admin assistant, I went to running the entire ground operations. That weekend, we did 2,000 skydives. And by the way, skydiving is illegal in Singapore. I want to share something really personable, personal about myself, which actually not many people know. I'm afraid of people. I never know what to say or how to interact with them. You know, people make me feel weird. I went out with my friends like maybe six times a year. It's true. People made me so uncomfortable. So guess what I did? With partners, I started up an events company so that I was forced to talk to people. Hundreds, if not more. If I didn't, I wouldn't be able to afford my chicken rice or my Milo Ping. I've since left that since that's not what I wanted for myself. But I'm successful because I managed to be able to talk to people. I overcame my fear with action. The Skydiving Festival taught me how to organize a large-scale event, which then gave me the confidence to be able to start up my own events company later on, which then gave me the insight into consumers' needs, wants, motivations, behaviors, so that today I can pursue my passion using technology to improve lives as a marketing director of One Cent Movement, a nonprofit that helps consumers give easily to charity and a CEO of Zip Trip, which helps value travelers get the most out of their trip. I got this mega cool Japanese proverb I want to share with you guys. Vision without action is dream. Is daydream, sorry. Action without vision is nightmare. So visualize what you want and act on it. Let's talk about getting into shape. Why are so few people fit? It's because it's hard. It requires work. You can't cheat. The amount of discipline you put in equates the result you get. Wanting something is easy. Taking the action to get it is hard. Success comes to those who do things, especially when they don't want to do it. I used to be a smoker. Eight years, 15,000 cigarettes. I knew it was bad. Every smoker knows it's bad, but I just kept going. Then one day I sat and realized every single day I was spending an hour for eight years smoking. I had to stop. So I looked at the people I respected and I noticed a pattern. None of them smoked, not one. If I wanted to be successful like them, balanced on the inside and contributing intellectually, I couldn't possibly be a smoker, so I decided to quit. 
So for two weeks, you know, I bummed cigarettes off people, and I was trying to cut down, and I did. But then I got fed up with how weak I was being. Weakness is not being able to commit to your own goals. So I stopped it, and I gave up smoking completely. On the 1st of July, I've been smoke-free ever since. It was very hard. I was struggling to breathe because my lungs were repairing themselves. My motivations had to be rock solid. <coughs> I forced myself to feel disgusted with smoking, to think that it was lazy and stupid, so that I wouldn't want to. Some of my peers smoked, so I did not go out at night for a month so as not to tempt myself. And I said, hey guys, I've decided to quit. Can you help me by not smoking around me? I'm very lucky to have supportive friends. They were like, that's cool, man. I avoided activities that I knew would stress me out and trigger my need to smoke. I was very harsh with myself. No excuses. I just decided on my goal, identified the actions necessary, and did it. Failure is not always caused by things going wrong. Failure occurs when the right actions are not taken. I quit before. Anyone here who smokes will know what I mean. Yeah, we are quitting. We are on the way there. But I always failed because a part of me still wanted to smoke. I did not want to give it up. So I identified that part and I conditioned myself to associate smoking with traits that I despised so that I wouldn't want it. Bad grades are not caused by a hard exam. The exam is hard because you don't understand the subject well. Failing to get a leadership position is not because you weren't chosen. It is because during your job, you did not step up when you, want, when you should have. Be conscious of the actions you need to take and take them. Do you want to get fit? Wake up an hour earlier every day and do something. Do you want to start your own business? Put aside two hours and work on your business plan. It's that easy. Take action. And that's it. Success is personal. Recognize impact. Small things add up. And sometimes big things are not quantified in numbers. And lastly, take action. I wouldn't be standing here today if I followed the path that was expected of me. But I still consider myself successful. Success is not a one-time thing. I failed many times before. I just get up, dust myself off, and move along. You know why? Because failure is overrated. It's so yesterday. Don't be afraid of it. Just keep trying using different methods. Here's the thought. If every single person here just decided to be 10% better, just 10%, I mean today you can clear a disorganized space, you can get rid of lousy eating habits or bad posture, just choose to be better knowing that it will contribute to your eventual goal in mind. And so if everyone decided that, collectively, this place, this group, this very auditorium could do things greater than any sum of money or or any physical feat one person can achieve. Some succeed because they are destined to, but most succeed because they are determined to. And that is evolution of self. Constant change, constant growth, constant success. I'm done. Thank you.